Hey everybody, what's up? This is Devin Lavore coming at you solo. Although Michelle is over there in the background. Say hi, Michelle. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and um, first off, I want to say a huge thank you to all of you who have given to us this weekend. We were able to stay here this weekend until things come to pass. God's given me a, a, a revelation of kind of where I'm at where we're at in the timeline of things, and I can't even tell you, we're so close. If it was a measuring stick, and, and we're trying to get to the number 12, we're right on number 11. Oh, 11, transition. Anyway, but, uh, <laughs> but I felt like God gave me a word today, and I just wanted to share it with you guys. Um, I already tried to do this, but it kind of was coming out a little rushed. So I was like, you know what, I kind of I think I don't know how I want to do this. And so I wanted to talk about, I titled it, Let There Be Light, because I really felt like the Lord was really just feeding me just a bunch of information and revelation about that. So I'm just going to kind of give it to you as I received it. I felt like the Lord was showing me, like, listen, the world that we live in, it's a dark, dark, dark world. Even at 1.30 in the afternoon, we look outside and we see it's sunny. Maybe it's raining and it's overcast, but there's still light out right? But in the spirit, it is like great darkness. There's like demonic stuff happening all the time. I mean, all the time. Busy, 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 busy. It's like going to a mall during, like, what's a busy time? Like Christmas or, or, or Black Friday. Yeah. It's like God's like, that's the way it is, like all the time in the spirit. Constant darkness and battle. And it's a battle between light and dark. And, and the Lord was like, so, like, so what is darkness? You know, there's so many scriptures I could read. I've got them right in front of me. There's so many scriptures I could read about the, the battle between darkness and light, right? Well, what is darkness? Darkness is just the, the absence of God, the absence of truth. So it's, it's the, it's deception. It's lying. It's, it's trickery. It's all those things that are, of the devil and of the flesh. And the Lord says, like, you are the light of the world. Where is that scripture? Matthew 5.14. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. And in another scripture, in John 8.12, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not be walking in the dark, but will have the light, which is light. In the beginning, God said, let there be light. Um... And that was actually the word of God coming out of his mouth. So we can see the word of God is the light. So that's in Jesus, like, I am that light. And if you follow me, the word made flesh, if you follow the word by the spirit, and we also have the spirit with us, you then become the light of the world. You are the light. So see, that is why a lot of times we are under attack. Because this world is a dark world and it's under the power of the prince of the air, right? That means the de the devil. I mean, the, the enemy, the, the father of lies governs all darkness, all things that are just not of God. He is the governor and the overseer over all of it. So when he sees light, it's bad because the light will expose his deeds for what they really are. That's why the Pharisees governed and under the authority and the rule of the kingdom of darkness, wanted to crucify and kill Jesus. They had to snuff him out because he was exposing, he was the real thing. And he was come in, he was shining so bright with the miracles and deliverances and healing. Everything that a person connected to the Father's heart should be doing, he was doing all these things and he was exposing, shining a light on how fake they were. They were of the darkness. Even in John 8, Jesus said, you are of your father, the devil. You're you're of the darkness. You don't you don't even know me. You don't even recognize me. If you really knew who I was and you were of the Father, you wouldn't be trying to kill me. And so, um, so that's kind of a little a bit of an explanation of the darkness, an, an, an overview. So, what is the light? Well, the light is truth. It's 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 revelation. And I felt like the Lord was saying, like, that's the world you live in. You know, it's constant, ongoing. And he reminded me of. Daniel, in the book of Daniel, where Daniel prayed, but for 21 days, he did not get the manifestation of the answer to his prayer. And then the angel came to him and said, well, the reason is because I was being held back. 
and by the prince of Persia. The prince of Persia, that means a demonic spirit that's kind of governing the, the uh, area called Persia. And so he had to fight through, and who, knew, who knows what's really going on in the spirit realm. But it's like, the bottom line is, it, there was a battle going on in the unseen that Daniel didn't know about. That's why faith is required for everything that happens. Because faith opens the door for the Lord to come through. But if he doesn't come through, you know, right away, and we give up, then we close the door. Or stop believing. And it's just like, why aren't things happening? And well, because you keep closing the door. You know what I mean? It's like it's like, hey, let's uh let's open the door. I'm I'm getting ready to uh, to bring in the uh, furniture for your house. Okay, cool, just prop it open and you prop it open and they don't come in in the first like minute and a half and you're like, Oh, you guys aren't you guys are taking too long and you close the door and you wonder why you're not getting any furniture. It's like, Well, uh, I told you to open the door. <laughs> and, and so uh and so this is why Jesus spent so much of his time saying, teaching us about the, the realm of the spirit and the realm of the natural and why he was always teaching his disciples to pray that the kingdom of God, that unseen realm of light and truth and reality would come in and shine the light and, and it would be the reality here on the earth, not all the stuff that we buy into, you know? It says, you know, God says, I am love. And, in, and if you read First John Basically, the entire book is about the light. It's about light versus darkness. I mean, the whole book, all five chapters. And basically, it says God is light and there's no darkness in him. So God is love. He is the definition of love. And when we look at Jesus' life and we really get to know the Lord, you can't just know the Bible and not know the person who wrote the book and then say you know the Lord. You don't. Um you actually have to know him. You have to be in relationship with him. Um, I go to church and I read the Bible. That doesn't mean you have a relationship with God. Absolutely not. And so it's like, based on his definition of love and light, that's what we need to be walking by. Um, you know, it's not a political thing. You know, like politics and genders and races and all these different categories which were structured by darkness have their definition of what love is well if there is an authoritative definition of what love is then everyone should be bowing down to it and agreeing well that's love but no there's all these wranglings and fights and quarrels and stuff no this is love no that's love and this and it's just like uh no god is love and what he says is right and so that's why we have to be like when we have to be uh what is it? The light of the world. And bring the truth. And the only way you can do that is by the Spirit. <clears throat> and so I felt like the Lord gave me some elements. Um, he gave me some elements of this walk in the light that are so important. He said, listen, uh, 1 Peter 2, 9. But you are a chosen race. A chosen race. Hello. All of us are one race in Jesus a royal priesthood, a dedicated nation. Wow. God's own purchased special people that you may set forth the wonderful deeds and display the virtues and perfections of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's why in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, Paul's going, you're already proving yourself defeated because you're you're splitting yourself off into factions and denominations and saying, oh, I'm with this person and I'm with that group and I'm with this culture and I'm with this race and I'm with this political party and I'm with this and I'm with... Th that's, all, that's all darkness. You're submitting yourself to a dark thing. And it's like, when the truth of the matter is, we're all one race and we're all one people and that we're in this kingdom of light. Look what God has done. He's delivered me from sin. He's made me new. Behold, I am a new cre creation, never before seen footage on the planet, planet Earth. And it's like, that's who we are. And it's like the spirit of God within us gives us light. He, he is the light. So that's why the enemy wants to attack you. That's why he wants to, he wants to just, he wants to flood you with negativity, depression, anxiety, um, anger, all those things, <laughs> those are not of God. 
That's the enemy trying to influence you, trying to snuff out the light. You know, persistent, um, incurable afflictions of the body and of the soul, of the mind. That's the devil. That's totally the works of the devil. And what did Jesus say? He came to undo the works of the devil. In 1 John 3, 8, John says the, the, the Son of Man appeared to undo the works of the devil. He came to shed light and not only just shed light and say, oh, I'm showing you, but he actually came to show and then remove anything that is not of God. He's removing it, you know. Perfect love casts out all fear. That means love is doing it. Love is casting out the fear. It's getting rid of all the all the junk um, because that's what love does. You know, love doesn't side with somebody and say, you know what I mean? Love just sides with itself. <laughs> that, may, that sounds wrong, but it's true. But um, but I felt like the Lord was like prayer. He showed me in the spirit, like when you're a person of the spirit walking in this dark world, the, the darkness in the spirit recognizes you. It knows who you are. It knows who you are. People may not. People may misunderstand you. They don't get it. Whatever. That doesn't matter. That spiritual realm that is constantly at war between dark and light, it knows who you are. It knows what team you play for. It know, It recognizes the jersey you're, <laughs> you're wearing. And it wants to darken you. It wants to snuff you out. It wants to kill you destroy you, steal from you, whatever it's going to take to get you to not be light, to get you to at least be hidden. You may not deny Christ, that's fine. Can I at least just cover you up and have you not say the name Jesus and have you compromise on your faith and all of that? Jesus said, let your light shine, so shine before men that they will glorify your, your Father in heaven. You know, and it's like the enemy has done a great job. I'm not trying to give in the enemy praise, you understand? But he's done a great job of snuffing out the people of God throughout all of history to get them to deny the Lord and and hide themselves. And I mean, we have an entire church culture right now that is just hidden, totally hidden. There is no light coming from it. That's why nobody wants to go to church. Now, that's a whole other issue. But it's like, God's like, you as a believer with the spirit of God in you, you are shining bright and you are a target. Whether you like it or not, you are a target. The enemy knows you and he's going to do what he can to put you back into bondage. You know, that's why Paul said, don't be, now that you've been set free from the bondage of fear, don't go back into it. That means you can. You can be a believer and you can be absolutely bound by fear. Uh, been there, done that took years for, for God to just really grow me and mature me to the point I got my, I got so mature in the Lord that the, the chains just busted off. I was just like, there's just no need for me to be afraid. You know, and of course, fear the fear is just a constant thing of the spirit of darkness is always trying to get, get to you. And if it can find a place, it's going to attach itself. You know, but God was like, you, just you and the Holy Spirit in you is light enough. But he also said prayer. When you're praying, it's almost like you amplify the light. It just gets brighter. And it's like, hmm, why does the devil always want to attack your prayer life? Why is it that why is it that every time a church wants to get together and have prayer, there's always an attack and an assault of distraction and mayhem and chaos and craziness over the prayer that makes you want to quit? It's almost like a political campaign. You see so many of those ads, you're just like, oh my gosh, I give up. I don't care. I'm not even going to vote. You know what I mean? It's like, that's the whole, that's the purpose of the attack, to get you to quit, to get you to stop praying. Because when you pray, the light gets even bigger. Yeah. Can I share it real quick? Oh, okay. Hey, everybody. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> wait, she's I'm like, just, she's I'm like, just I'm listening. Like, I'm, I'm getting in. I'm like, I'm going to jump wait. in real quick. <laughs> so, um... I guess I just wanted to share as like an example of his. You were um, like, oh, I, I got to get in on this. <laughs> I, I can't just sit on the sidelines. <laughs> but um, actually, when we were in um, Indianapolis, and mm. as many of you, if you followed for any length of time, this was back in March, and um, we went there. up to Indianapolis, well. and we knew, like, I felt like we, we had been visiting. Um, Indiana, Lawrenceburg, Indiana. And we really felt like God was saying, hey, we're putting a, like a stake, stake in, in the, the ground. ground there, yeah. 
But then we... God's going to move. We, we left there and went to um, Indianapolis. And immediately I knew this was not our territory. We had no authority there, Yeah, basically. God was not sending the sense, us there. God was not sending us there yeah. or expanding the territory in that, in that sense. Um, but anyway, so literally the first night that we were there, we were doing our God time and we were praying. And mm-hmm. in... And I was praying. As I was praying, now listen. I let had, me set the context. Yeah. We're going to visit friends. They're no longer friends of ours. But we're going to visit friends. I mean, literally, twenty minutes before we arrive there, we're texting. Hey, yeah, I hope, can't wait to see you. Blah 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 blah. And as soon as we get there, it's like, like whoa. It's like something's not right. I mean, deep, deep darkness. Yeah. And it was just like, oh, okay, Lord, what's going? On? Yeah. <laughs> what's going on? And. And, and so, so that's kind of like was the context, but we were still kind of, you know, it was that first Christian night. Christian friends in ministry, we, we all that. We were there and we're like, okay, well, let's, you know, let's worship and, and mm-hmm. do what we normally do. And so as we were praying, I had this vision where it was, all it was, was, I mean, it was dark, like no light. Like and, not see your hand yeah, from your face like, dark. We saw it at the same time. Yeah. We both saw it. And it was just pitch black dark Mm -hmm. but as i was praying i felt like there was this light like a sonic boom kind of thing kind of like 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 a rings around saturn right and it just but it just like it went out went out Mm -hmm. and i really felt like god was like that was your prayer like you guys are here but this is what's going out but this is also where you are you are in utter darkness Mm -hmm. and your present is is like this beacon of light that just like bursted through and but let me tell you it was I mean we felt I mean the attack that entire week just the time that we were there I mean it was I mean you guys know our kids a little bit they are very sensitive to the spirit and we've raised them up in that um, we let them know, like, okay, that's not the Lord. Yeah. But, uh, and they, they, that, oh, yes, that is the Lord. We encourage them just in the truth. Yeah. You know, and so they're very sensitive. Every one of them was getting attacked. Yeah. Every one of them was feeling it, having demonic dreams. My, my son, Elijah, he never has that stuff. I mean, he was dreaming some crazy stuff. Joel was like, I feel like the devil's attacking me. I mean, he knew. Yeah. They, they are spiritually very intelligent. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it was just like, wow, this and, is insane. And Lady had, she had dreams. Oh, gosh, I mean, it was, crazy. it was just, it was intense. Isaiah I had cried dreams. cried for a straight week. Yeah. And it wasn't teething. He, <laughs> he, he didn't wasn't. get teeth until he Even he was, was sensitive like to almost it. Almost 11 months so old. Again, so again, <laughs> you know, the spiritual world is real. It really is. And it's like, you can see, they know who you are. Whether you want to acknowledge them or not. In fact, the enemy would love it. It's his favorite group of people. You know, you have, you have a favorite food or a favorite flavor of ice cream. His favorite flavor of ice cream is people who don't believe he's there. Yeah. People who don't want to talk about him. People don't want to acknowledge, well, that's devil this, devil that. There's, there's entire church cultures that don't even want to talk about the devil. Yeah. They don't want to talk about any of it. Yeah. Because it just makes us feel uncomfortable. And I think, too, like <laughs> oh. when you're talking about the darkness and the light, you can have regions where it is held captive oh, absolutely. by demonic powers. Mm-hmm. And and there is a definite, there's just this, like in Indianapolis specifically where we were, it was, was the spirit of witchcraft. And Heavy. It spelled, like literally, I felt like we were stuck there. Yeah. And, and we really kind of were, but it was just like, oh my gosh, Lord, it is going to take you to get us out of here. And, and it was crazy to go from there where it just... It was just battle, 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 and, like, even just to leave and get back to Nashville. But I'm telling you, when we got back to Nashville, oh, my gosh, it was like, oh, we're home in the sense of, like, we had the favor of the Lord. I mean, it was, like, complete opposite of what it was there. Oh, we got to stay at that most awesome Airbnb Airbnb ever. And And we were just like, oh, my gosh. It was just like, thank you, Lord. It's like you cross this line, and you're going, oh. Yeah. <sighs> just, but like, you can just know. feel it in the spirit, it. and I don't know how many of you have ever, you know, if you've gone traveling, driven to different places. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, God can give you spiritual information about a place. Oh yeah, it will feel a certain way, the atmosphere, and and it's like whoa. And God's kind of giving you a heads up of what it is that you <laughs> might be battling against. 
-hmm. and and or just letting you know like this is what's going on here and yeah. and so you're not caught unaware because even in when we were in Lawrenceburg there is very much wow. there's like this just a depressive oppressive oppressive like, spirit and yeah. and it was interest it was good in a sense to go back because we realized whoa it was a spirit of death this is what we we used to live under yeah. And to be away from it, and then you go back, and it's like, it really was, it was a spirit of death. God gave me a vision of this person, or not, not a vision, but I was going to the store, and I saw this person walking, and I'm not kidding. I felt like I was just in that brief moment. I felt like it was the Lord. You can debate it amongst yourselves. But I just felt like the Lord took me to the, the walking dead, because mm -hmm. I've watched like every season except for the previous one, um, season seven. <laughs> And I was just there, and God was like, that is what's going on here. Yeah. You are literally in a town of the walking dead. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow. And the Lord just showed it to me, like, really, right now, as we're doing this video, like, because we did not know what it was. Yeah. I lived there for 11 years, and God just showed me right then, like, it was a spirit of death. Yeah. Every time we would try to do something in this particular church that I went to for, like, eight years, everything we tried to do that was really cool, that wasn't approved, you know, wasn't super controlled by the spirit of Jezebel... <laughs> It was like death. No, you can't do that. Death to that. Death to this. Death to that. And yeah. it was death, you know? And we're talking about Christians here. Yeah. We're talking about people of the Lord. Just because you're a Christian, listen, it's, if you if you are a Christian, especially if you're a Christian, because that's who's going to listen to this, <laughs> there's an enemy out to afflict you yes. and put stuff on you and to deceive you into thinking he is the Lord. Yeah. I mean, there's people out there right now under some strong spirits of witchcraft, and they think that they're hearing from God and prophesying and all that until the real thing shows up, and you want to kill it or kick it out or mm -hmm. remove it or push it out of your house and all, all that. It's like, listen, like what happened when Jesus came to the uh, Gennesaret or whatever it was, and he delivered the guy from the from Legion? Oh, yeah. And they yeah. wanted to kick him out. Yeah. That's, that was, those weren't the people kicking him out. That was that demonic spirit of just, oh, you you kicked out my main dude. Yeah. Like, look, you need to get out of here. Get yeah. him out of there. And Jesus is like, all right. If you, if you this, this group of people is so submitted to this area's dark principalities, I'm not going to get through to them. Mm -hmm. and that's why I just like when we went there to Indianapolis, it was a, it was a, it was a lesson. Yeah. It was a lesson to be learned, but man, God did some amazing did. things there. He did. Did some amazing things there. So it's like, so there's that, you yeah. know? <laughs> Just had to share that. <laughs> okay, she's going to stay in the video because I love her. <laughs> she, she was like, she was tired. And then I started I talking and she was like, wait a minute, I'm revived. Yeah. <laughs> Let me get up in this. <laughs> yep, I was like, no, you do the video. I'm kind of tired. And yeah. You know, so the Lord showed me that prayer, you being a believer, is, yes. a, is a measure of light. It's a great measure yes. of light. It's not a smaller measure of light, but it's like when you have a fire and you start adding logs and stuff to it, it makes it bigger, right? And God was telling me praise and worship yes. is like a bonfire in the spirit. Mm -hmm. When you get a group of people together in the name of Jesus and they are singing in the spirit, praying yes. in the spirit, and living by the spirit, and everything that's coming out is of the spirit of God it's like a fireworks show and a bonfire all at once. Yeah. And it's like if you are in the darkness and you are a person of the darkness or, or a spirit of the darkness, man, you want to try to douse that. Yeah. And I can just uh, testify as um, personally. Like I know um, for me, like music has been a huge part of my life. Um, growing up, I've always just enjoyed worship and worshiping the Lord. Um, but there was really just a time in my life where I was really getting attacked. Um, I didn't oh, realize it at the yeah, time, you didn't realize it. but it was just like, I, I was feeling so bad in my heart and in my life that I wouldn't even sing. I wouldn't do, I'd go to church. I felt wrong for worshiping the Lord all day, every day, all day, every day. And, and you felt the heaviness of I it did. all the time, right? Yeah. Didn't you actually see it one time or something like yes, that? Yes, I did. I, um, I was actually, um, it was at night and I was um, sleeping and I just, I saw like the darkness mm -hmm. at, at, like in the room 
and I mean, it was just pitch black. I mean, it was it was terrifying. It was back yeah. when I was probably I don't know, like twenty three ish, somewhere around there, twenty four ish. But it was, but it's like that's what it was attacking. It was attacking my worship. Mm-hmm. It was attacking the prayer. And I know personally, even now, like it was I'll notice, the light yeah, it was produced. attacking the light mm-hmm. and. I know, like, even now, um, personally, like, when I am being attacked, I've realized now, whoa, I stop praying in the Spirit as much. Mm-hmm. And I become quiet. I become very yep. quiet because yep. I, I go inward and I start processing. But that usually is now, that is a key, like, a red flag. <laughs> warning. 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 <laughs> Something is not right. And it's like... All right, so now I'm like, all right, I gotta practice doing the opposite. Yeah, I might not feel like praying in the spirit, but I'm gonna do it. But I will do it. Yeah, I and will it's like, praise. All right, I am going to speak and praise the Lord with my mm-hmm. mouth because it's not just it's not just the singing; it's the declaring who God is mm-hmm. and and who He is in your life. And it's like the enemy does not want you to do that. So that's what he's going to cut off. Yeah. He's going to cut off that worship and that praise and the prayer and anything that's going to get you to worship God. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like because we're made in the image of God. And mm-hmm. God, the first thing we know God said in the Bible is let there be light. That came out of his mouth. Yeah. It came out of his mouth. And the first thing that came out of his mouth was light. Yeah. So we're made in his image, so he's trying to get us to shut up. He's trying to shut us down. Or it's like, okay, I know like half of the planet's just not going to shut up because that's your personality type. Anyway, <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get you to say the wrong things. Yes. I'm going to get you to confess. Them. Now, you, you know you can't afford that. You know you don't have enough money for that. You know that uh, you, know, you know you can't do that. You're not skilled enough for that. You're not qualified enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not qualified. Uh Uh-oh, look what that is. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, I can't do that. Oh, man, you just prophesied over yourself. Yeah. You know, we were listening to something just the other day or yesterday. Yeah, yesterday morning about just what you're confessing. What are you having come out of your mouth? And it's like if God, out of the words of his mouth, he spoke life. That's mm -hmm. the very thing that we want to speak out of our life. You know, just go and look in the book of James. He talks about the tongue. And the importance of what we're saying is like you don't want to be having, you know, cursing and blessing trying to come out of the same thing. Yeah. You know, and it's like. But no, that's what the enemy is trying to get us to do. That's the enemy is trying you know? to get us to do. And it's like, all right, we just, we want to be light. And so we can speak light into our life yeah. by speaking the truth of God. But I feel, oh, I like, feel, I feel that's not reality. Yeah. You know, that's not reality. And that's what this whole point of this whole video really is all about. Is God saying, let me show you reality. Yeah. Reality, Devin, is you always are surrounded by darkness. Yeah. The problem with the church right now is they're so deceived into thinking that they can come into this. They can create their little camp. Utopia. Of you, Yes. It's like a Christian utopia where everything's fine and dandy and good. It's like, no, the enemy's going to be all over that. Yeah. He's going to be all over that because you're not being, you're not functioning the way you're supposed to function. You know, if every time you go to hammer in a nail, you grab the end of a screwdriver and you just start whacking it, it works. It's like, that's not its function. Yeah. That's why it keeps chipping. And you always have to buy another one every six months because the handle's all jacked up from you trying to use it like a hammer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why people keep leaving church. They come in with their needs and maybe they feel a touch of the Lord, right? Or something, maybe. But then they're like, there's nothing else here lasting. It's like, I feel like I'm worse off now six months later than I was when I came in. What's going on? Because you stepped into a religious structure that has no spirit of God in it. Maybe the spirit of God might visit from time to time in certain ways, but there's no life there. Yeah. The light of life that comes from being in, from walking in the spirit of God, that's not there, mm-hmm. you know? And it's like, it's like, what are you going to do? Well, you're going to, you're going to go back out into the dark world. You, you fight yeah. it on your own. And, and a lot of people don't make it. Yeah. You know? So it's like, we are called to be the church. Yes. That word ecclesia that Jesus used was not a religious word. It was actually a secular word. It was. It would be like God saying, I'm going to go form my Congress, or I'm going to go form my Parliament. Mm-hmm. You know? And what does that mean? Ecclesia, called out ones. That means you're called out from people 
are called out from all walks of life to come together in a governmental capacity to make decisions that affect a region, that mm. affect people's lives. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we're called to be a church to affect this earth yeah. for God's kingdom. We are God said, I mm -hmm. want this kingdom here on earth. And so he's given us the authority. The spiritual authority. The, the spiritual authority to mm -hmm. bring light here to this earth, mm -hmm. to bring God's kingdom down. To affect the spiritual realm. Yes. You know what I'm saying? We are called out to, I mean, look at our current, I don't know where you live right now where you're watching this, but in, here in America, our government is jacked up. <laughs> I mean, isn't every government jacked up? Because it's run by men who are trying to do different things. They're not unified and all that stuff. So it's like, ugh. So if you can do that to the church, it's going to be the same thing. Yeah. You are not going to be people called out to come together to make informed by God spiritual decisions that affect the spiritual realm over a nation. Which then, of course, affects the actual actual world reality yeah it's <laughs> in the world when it, when things are affected in the spirit it's it comes into the natural you it can't does. have one and not the other why is that because the reason that there's a great big num mass amounts of suicides in a nation is because that spirit is running all over the place mm -hmm. so god's like hey you people go there and you need to do this because you're called out Ecclesia, church, you're called out. I need this governmental group to go over there, and you need to exercise the authority of the signet ring of Jesus in that region, region and cast that spirit out of there. Mm -hmm. Get that thing out of there. And then all oh, suddenly, wow, people aren't committing suicide anymore. What happened? Because yeah. that spirit that was there got cast out. It got pushed away. Yeah. You know what I mean? There was a time in the United States of America where there was great light, and then there was pockets of darkness, you know? Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's been reversed. Yeah. There's great darkness, and then there's pockets of light. And the Lord is saying, I am getting ready to reverse that. Yes. I'm giving you an opportunity. Yeah. To, I'm opening the door for an opportunity for the work to be done for us as a church, the light of the world, the salt of the earth, to come together and make spiritual decisions. Because, you know, when a government passes a law or does something, it affects your life whether you like it or not. Yeah. Whether you vote or not. Well, I'm just not going to vote because I'm going to vote my conscience. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> you're basically <laughs> opting out. And you're saying, well, whatever happens, happens. Because whatever happens is going to happen and it's going to affect your life. Yeah. You know, we have to we have to come together as a body of Christ, who we are called to be, the church, and make governmental decisions together in the spirit that will change a region, change a nation. Suddenly, people are doing business correctly. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, teachers aren't cheating or favoring students anymore. And I know that sounds like a random example, but this world of the, the, the spiritual world affects everything. It does. It affects everything. Like, it affects the food industry. Yes. You know, it affects the entertainment industry. It affects everything. You know, there's this one guy named uh, Francis Schaefer. He is no longer on the earth. But he said you can always tell where the spiritual climate of a nation is by the art they're producing. Mm -hmm. And I mean, look at the art we're producing right now. Just just S-E-X everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? My kids are awake. They probably know what I'm spelling, but they're like, what's that? You know? <laughs> but but I'm just like I'm just saying like it's everywhere. Just just you know what I'm saying? Just yeah. you can't look somewhere and not see a woman's boobs. I mean, I'm looking at a tea, looking at a show about food, and this chick's always got her stuff out, mm -hmm. and I'm just like, oh my gosh, what is going on? Like, I'm, I I want to learn about pancakes, not milk. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, that why does that exist? Because why did the Britney Spears and the Christina Aguilera's and all these ones that have come through the ranks that they seem to be nice girls, Miley Cyrus. Hannah Montana, she was cool. And then she became what she became. And then she said, and now she's kind of back to being like, man, I, I'm, I gotta stay away from that. Why? Because there is a demonic spirit in Hollywood and in the entertainment industry that's like, and you can see God making great strides in the in the entertainment industry right now. Yeah. I mean, when Chris Pratt can get up in an MTV award show and talk about God and all, yeah. I'm, and then people clap. 
they don't boo him off the stage. I'm like, yeah. whoa, yeah. look at what's going on. God is on the move. All these prophetic words that are coming down from heaven about what's going on in the spirit is, is actually happening. And it's affecting that area. That is why you need the prophets. Yeah. That's why you need the people who hear from the Lord like amazingly and they're accurate. And they're not just trying to build a ministry and get offerings because that is literally not what we're trying to do. But it's like, you hear what's going on in the spirit. Okay, now I need you guys to agree with it and begin spraying it here on the earth because I don't know what it does. It's like, there's light here and he it's funneling down to those lights that are us and you guys who are believers. But, but it's like, when we get it and we begin declaring it, it creates like this pillar of light, mm -hmm. this not funnel, but you know what I'm saying? Like a shaft of light because there's agreement between heaven and earth and like, boom, this thing can open up and now stuff can start flooding in. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like the dam's broken and things are flooding in and then people be like, well, you prophesied such and such and so and so and I don't feel anything. I don't see anything different. Well, there's a maturity issue there. <laughs> it's like, it's like there is something happening in the spirit. You must come into agreement with it. If you know it's the Lord, that's all that matters. Yeah. You don't need to see this and see that. And it's just like if you continue to believe, you will see the glory of God. Yeah. This is what God is saying. Okay, I'm coming into agreement with it, and I'm declaring it. And if God's if God's leading you to do that, yeah. you know, everything we do is by the Spirit. The Spirit of God wants to bring light. If you read Isaiah 61, 1 through 3, you'll see what God's will is. Yeah. He, he wants to reverse everything that the enemy's done. You know, beauty for ashes, comfort for mourning, yeah. uh, gladness and praise for a heavy, burdened spirit. Yeah. You know, what you, you were just talking about. Yeah. That's that heavy, burdened spirit one that took your praise away. Yeah. Took your worship away. Mm -hmm. Because God wants there to be light. Yes. That's what, that's what God said. He said, let there be light in the beginning. And then Jesus was born. He was saying it again. Yeah. He was saying, let there be light now in human form. Yes. I'm going to put my word that I spoke in Genesis in human form. Yeah. And he's going to die for you so there can be a great opening of light for all men yeah. to come in. So I could keep going on and on about this. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm one of those ones that won't shut up. But <laughs> but I'm not trying to, you know. It's just like I'm not ashamed of the gospel. But it's like I just felt like the Lord wanted to give that word mm -hmm. of like, listen, this is the world you live in, and this is who you are in it. Either you're going to deal with that and embrace that and say, okay, then how shall I then live? Or you can say, no, I don't like that. I'm going to go do my own thing. can't tell you how many times back in my uh, more glorious ripped days, <laughs> people would be like, wow, look at you, man. You are super fit. You are literally doing this thing and walking this thing out. How can I, be, how can I get like you? Okay, well, you need to do this. And they're like, uh, what? Uh, I don't want to do that. Yeah. It's like, well, you're not going to get like this. Then. You know, you're, it's just not going to happen. Well, I don't believe that. I'm going to then therefore believe something else that I can do to get like that and be like, I, you know, you start entertaining. It's like the things that aren't true. It's like the word says, be doers of the word, not just hearers of it. And the Bible goes on to say, what will happen if you do that? Well, you will betray yourself. How? By reasoning that is contrary to the truth. Entire church right now, so much of us in the church right now, we are betrayed. We, be, we have betrayed ourselves. We get mad when someone stabs us in the back and all that. What about you stabbing yourself in the back? By not agreeing with what the word of God says. By, by just betraying yourself, by reasoning contrary to the truth. Well, I don't believe in all that devil stuff. Well, you're betraying yourself because it's real. Yeah. Well, I don't believe in all that speaking in tongues and prophesying and miracles and faith. That died out with the apostles. Well, you're betraying yourself by reasoning that's contrary to the truth. Well, I don't believe in all that prosperity stuff. Uh-oh. Well, you're betraying yourself by reasoning that is contrary to the truth. You don't believe in prosperity? You really don't? Stop taking up offerings then. Did anyone hear me? <laughs> Seriously. It's like stop looking for it. Why, why do we do that? It's because that's the heart of God. He wants us to prosper. He wants us to, God doesn't want us to be in poverty. That's curse. That's darkness. Yeah. Even in the Jewish culture, if you were in poverty, people would look at you like, whoa, what did you do wrong? Yeah. 
You know what I mean? It's sinned or something like <laughs> in your family line. Yeah, it's it's not about me. You can have really nice, expensive things and not be selfish. There are people out there that are like that. They're a Christian believer. They know the Lord well, and the Lord's blessed them and prospered them. Look at the history of the of the people of God. They were all blessed and prosperous. But but it's like, well, I don't believe in that. It's like, okay, well then you're you're believing in something. You're going to then believe in something that's not true. And thus submit yourself to the kingdom of darkness. It's like, why would you do that? Yeah. If you say you're someone who really wants to know the truth, then prepare to be uncomfortable. Like, prepare for it. Expect it. I mean, it happens to me all the time. Literally happened to me just this morning. Because Michelle prophesied a word, and I'm just like, Lord, that I am really confused now because that kind of goes against three or four different words that I thought you gave me, and I was uncomfortable with it. There, there's a choice you make in moments like that. Well, I'm either just going to cast off what she said, and I'm just going to believe what I believe. Or I'm going to get in the mud of uncomfortability and be like, Lord, what are you saying? I'm totally open and willing to be wrong. And then I felt like the Lord was like, no, you weren't wrong. It was like, we can't both be right. <laughs> and God's like, actually, you are. Because, because both of them come from the Lord. And he is able to put the pieces together and go, see? And then I'm like, oh, oh, yeah, I see now. <laughs> you know what I mean? But if I don't ha tackle that that uh, uncomfortability, then I would never have gotten to the revelation. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's, that's a lot of times when you're seeking that utopia, home church, I don't want to battle, I don't want to fight, I just want to live my nice little blessed life. You're already walking in deception. You're already betraying yourself by reasoning that's contrary to the truth because we live in a dark, dark, dark world. And we are called as ambassadors of Christ. First John 2, 6 says we need to walk as he walked. That means we gotta be. We are going to confront demons, and we are expected to win, not be afraid of. Yeah. You know, we're expected to hear from God and make decisions in the spirit, by the name of Jesus, that are going to affect people's lives. You know, we're we're called to to break chains and take bondages off people, not be in bondage ourselves and then seek a prayer. Oh, I'm going up to the altar again to get prayer for the 18th time. Yeah. It's just like, no. It's like. And that's really what God is doing right now. He is breaking his people free. Yes. So that yes. we have the authority <laughs> to go out and break yeah. other people free. You can't be declaring people to be free from things when you yourself aren't already free from it. When you're lugging around chains like Jacob Marley, <laughs> you know, dragging big locks, and, and you know what I'm saying? It's like. It's like Jesus loves you, drag chain. Yeah. Drag. <laughs> it's like uh, God wants you to know it and feel it yourself. Yeah. That's why there will be healing in the revealing. When God breaks through and the dam comes through and just, whoo, and just the, the water and the refreshing and the revival of God, you will know it. Yeah. You will experience, you will be like, oh my gosh, I can't, how can I not speak? Yeah. How can I not share this with you? It's just, I just won the lottery. I want to yeah. tell everybody, yeah. you know. Well, I'm going to come and steal it from you. I'll give it to you. Here, have some. Yes, yeah. have, have some Jesus. Yeah. It's what you need. You yeah. know. <laughs> so anyway, that's a that's a that's that's my word for today. <laughs> I think it's more than a word. It's more like that's that's my book for yeah. today. <laughs> your your <laughs> what do you novel. Say my spiel. Yeah. My no, spiel. I was going to say a short novel. Yeah, my my novella. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> But that was just on my heart today. You know, I'm sorry, but no, I'm not sorry. But not every word and message that comes from God can be three minutes and 25 seconds. It just hey, can't. I mean, you're really actually very short compared to Paul. I mean, he, Heck yeah. he, he talked so much that somebody fell out of a window. Eutychus. <laughs> he just fell out the window. Bam. Oh, I'm dead. And then he's like, oh, no, revive you. All right, come on. And he on, went back keep, up keep, and started going. <laughs> he kept teaching. Why? Because they were hungry for it. Yeah, they in other were. countries, man. They'll be like, you you come in, you come in and give a three minute and twenty five second like, word. That, They're gonna that, be like, Are you it? serious? That was the piece You of literally lettuce. gave us a grain of rice. Yeah. We are hungry. See, and that's a problem with a lot of people. They're not hungry. Yeah. They're not hungry. They want to be entertained. Yeah. They want to feel mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. They want to, ooh, what the word. Ooh, God's doing this. God's doing that. Ooh, this promise, promise. My life's gonna be better. Things are gonna be great. Ooh, yay. Ooh. Oh, ooh. Well that just reminds like, me dude. that um it reminds me of that. Uh, Queen of Cot Cotway. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And 
And so in this movie, they... Um, the Queen of Kotwe. There's a group of kids who basically are all just super poverty level and they they learn how to play chess and they go yeah. to this match against kids that are from like this private school. So rotate! It, rotate. <laughs> the knees were getting a little bit sore. But, um, so... How are your knees worse than mine? I don't know. I got... I just got glory knees. I guess. Anyway, go ahead. Um, Queen of Kotwe. Yeah, so <laughs> in this movie, so they go to this um, private school to um, have a tournament. And the coach was telling them, it's like, you know, they're, these kids at the private school, they're just going after um, just a meal. They're like, just going after a meal. They're just going after a meal, but you are fighting for your life. Yeah. And so there's just this extra drive that they have to do well and and win and go after things. Mm-hmm. And and that The really, kingdom of God suffers violence yes. and the violent take it by force. You know, if you're just like fat cat, just like, eh, give me something that's gonna entertain me, give me a prophetic word that's gonna make me feel good. Mm, got yeah. nothing for you. Yeah. Sorry. It's like we need to just <laughs> go after You just God. want a meal. Yeah. You wanna be just You're not in this for your life. Because your life depends it's on like, our life, our life does depend on the it Lord does. every day, and it's like you just have to keep going after. Even after the promises are fulfilled, you gotta still run after God with that mm-hmm. same intensity of my life depends on the Lord. That's every basically the day. entire book of Deuteronomy, right there. Yeah, because he was like, "Listen, this word that I'm telling you about, it's not a trifle. Meaning, yeah. it's not just this little Costco sample of chocolate." It is your very life. I yeah. forget where that is, but I'll put it up there. But it's just like, that's that's what the Lord... And why is this so important today? Because the Lord is like, I need you to understand reality because what you guys have done, the words you've spoken, the prayers you've prayed, the things you've declared, the things you've come into agreement with it, and you're still doing it today, even though you still haven't seen anything happen, but you know it's true, you know it's a reality, You've got to be encouraged. It was an all, it was all an encouragement for today. Mm-hmm. It was like, man, you I, I write this to you because you have overcome the darkness. Yeah. You know, you have overcome the darkness by faith, by believing in what? The word. The word which is a lamp. It is a light onto your feet. It's like you will never be defeated, ever, yeah. if you continue to do that. Yeah. It will never happen. You'll yeah. be like Daniel. And Joseph, who, you know, one of those rare people in the scripture that didn't have a fall, that mm-hmm. didn't have like a oops. You know, yeah. he, even David, as great as he was, he had a, we, we all know about his oops moment. Yeah. You know? And so it's just like the Lord, and we've been reading that actually in uh, Second Peter. Yeah. It's like, if you add these qualities to your life, you will never stumble. You'll never fall. Yeah. And I'm just like, Wow. That's like Olympic gold medal, Christian. I want that. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. Like, I don't want to stumble or fall in anything. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't want to be nearsighted and just be focused on my stuff. And it's like, God's like, believe in what I am telling you. Believe in what you hear in the spirit because that is more real than the temporal stuff that you get caught up in. Yeah. It's more real. If you're in a, in a terrible situation, whatever it is, but God is speaking a word to you. And, and I'm just tra- I'm talking maturely here. You really know this, or you're not playing games and saying, no, I just want this to be the Lord. No, no, no. If you really know that it's the Lord, man, it is It is yours. Yes. God does not ever say, hey, I'm going to give this to you if he hasn't already given it. Because you have to understand, God is outside of time. Yeah. If God says, hey, I'm going to give this to you, it's literally already given. Yeah. You just haven't caught up to it in time. Yeah. He's outside of time. He can cast things... I mean, there are there are scriptures, there are things that Isaiah himself prophesied that have not come true yet. <laughs> it's true. There are things that Daniel talked about that John, in his book of the Revelation, that haven't even come true yet. Oh, that's a long time coming. It must not have been from the Lord. No, it is, because he's outside of time. Yeah. And he's, he, he can pick any part of time and speak to you about it and be like, you'd be like, wow, that's awesome. And he knows that you might be like, Oh, how's that apply to my life right now? And it's like, it doesn't matter. He knows that he can trust you with that word, and he wants to encourage you with that word. So mm-hmm. God is willing to do anything and everything that God has ever told you. You need to pu- pull it out, and you need to rehearse it and get into it and believe in it. Yeah. 
because by believing, Jesus said, where, where, where was it? Um, <laughs> hold on, hold on a second. Once more, Jesus, this is John 8, 12. Once more, Jesus addressed the crowd. He said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not be walking in the dark, but will have the light, which is life. So it's like whatever God has spoken to you is light, and it is life, and it's, it is as good as already done. He's encouraging you and using it as a process of maturity, but it's like it's already been done. Mm -hmm. God's not going to say anything to you that isn't already done. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so, but we have to believe in it and walk it through time. That's, yeah. the, that's the tough part. And that's the opportunity that the enemy has to come in and create darkness and, 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 and get you to not believe. Yeah. You know? And so, I hope you guys are encouraged by that. You know, we live in a world that is full of darkness, but we are the light. And light yes. overcomes darkness. It does. Darkness has never overcome light. No. Nope. Ever. And so you need to be encouraged about who you are and that you have spiritual authority yes. in in the in the spiritual realm. That's why the enemy the enemy is not the enemy is afraid of you. Yeah. Like a snake. They're they strike because I mean snakes always look mean with the way their eyebrow way they're way they're uh formed, right? They always look yeah. angry and they're just ready to but snakes are some of the most fearful creatures in all existence. They're afraid, and so they're lo they're they're just launching out. Mm -hmm. You know, some of most of them, some of them are kind of aggressive. But anyway, but um, yeah. So just want to encourage you guys with that they, that uh, light is greater than darkness, <laughs> and you are the light of the world. Yeah. And whatever God has spoken to you is light and life, and it is greater. Greater yes. is He that is in me than he who is in the world. So be blessed by that, guys. And yeah. uh, we will definitely keep you updated on what's going on. Yes. We are about to be seated. I know I said that like, what, a week ago or something? I don't care. A week. God's like, that was like a nanosecond to yeah, me. I, I literally <laughs> just said that to you. Yeah. I was like, but that was a week ago. I know. I just said it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and so literally, we're about to be seated, man. We, we, we're going to start making videos in a completely different environment, and it's going to be good. Um. So did you want to add anything? I don't think so. Just, yeah. uh, you know, just continue God to... God bless all of you. Yeah. Live in the light. Be in know the light. Know who you as are. he is in the light. Yeah. Shine like the stars in the heavens. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> That's a song, by the way. No, I was trying to keep going. Oh, Lord, be my light and be my salvation. I was trying to keep going with the song. <laughs> I, I don't remember all the lyrics, so you know me. But anyway... You put a Michelleism on it. I did. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah. until next time, guys, we love you. We appreciate you, and um, just pray that you are blessed. Watch, you know, watch this on a Saturday night. You ain't got nothing else to do. Yeah. So, so we'll see you later. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye.